I have to say, the UI is quite slick. If you're looking at this and you think, wow, this looks like a console, that's what Steam was going for, and honestly it works really well. While a lot of the more hardcore PC gamers would scoff at the idea of using a console style UI, I think this is very important for the Steam Deck. So this UI, what makes it so special? What features are there? What features do we lose? And what features do we gain? If you like my content, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and join my Discord server in the description below. As you may have noticed, I am now affiliated with the Steam Deck Discord. Links in the description below. I gotta say, I love the sound design of this UI. You're not gonna hear much of it in this video, but just imagine that. So this is the home screen. This is what Steam OS defaults to every time you reboot the device. Not that you should be rebooting your device often, but you know. So it tells you what's new with your games, what your friends are doing, and what you should do. Like, you know, play a new game, or perhaps pick up some games in your wishlist. Next is your library. As you can see here, it defaults you to great on deck because these are all games that are verified on deck. You can sort by a number of criteria, though I just like leave mine in alphabetical order. And you see there's a couple of games that are verified for Steam Deck, which means they should play perfectly on your deck. All games are games that are, well, basically all of your games. Anything from playable to verified to unsupported to unknown. Sorting by all games is inadvisable if you have over, like, I don't know, 50 games. Much less, you know, hundreds and hundreds of games. It's also worth mentioning that if you set up any custom artwork on your Steam Deck, at least in the desktop mode, it'll transfer over to your Steam UI. Case in point being Dark Souls. Wait, let me rewind that real quick. It even works on animated pictures too. So next is installed games. These are games you installed, obviously. Let's move on to collections. Collections are very important for organizing your Steam library. You can also filter your various collections via playable status on your Steam Deck, if so desired. By the way, I'm not doing this on Steam OS, I'm doing this on Windows. I have access to the uh, Steam UI, so to speak, so most of the features should still apply. So I can't just assign non-Steam shortcuts here, unfortunately. So let's move on from this. So this is the Steam Store. It defaults you to the Great on Deck area if you're going on Steam Deck. It basically defaults you to a list of games that are verified for Steam Deck, like Aperture Desk Job. Yes, while the Steam Deck defaults you to Great on Deck, the fact of the matter is you have access to the full Steam Store. Everything from games that don't work on your deck to VR games that definitely don't work on your deck to games that work perfectly on your deck. So the Great on Deck section is pretty fully featured. You have a list of games, and then you can scroll down and look at your wish list and see games that are, well, verified for Steam Deck. I have quite a few games that are verified for Steam Deck because honestly, controller games should just be verified. You've also got popular titles that are verified for Steam Deck, like Elden Ring. As I alluded to before, you have access to the full Steam store. You can even access specific sales. At the top here, it says Steam Remote Play Together Sale. Do note that when you access these sale pages, you have a mix of both verified, playable, and unsupported games available to you to play. So ultimately, you the consumer need to do your due diligence. And you have access to all of your regular Steam store segments, like categories. You can search games by categories like free to play, demo, early access, controller friendly, software, etc, etc. And you know, genres, subgenres, all sorts of things like that. You also have the search function, and in addition to all of your standard search functions, you now have the ability to narrow by Steam Deck compatibility. And there are a couple of games that have either been untested or are just straight unsupported. And that's unfortunate, especially in the top echelon of games, except for Elden Ring, of course. And finally, you have your wish list. Your wish list is the same, but it also tells you if games are compatible on Steam Deck or not. It's quite unfortunate that Guilty Gear Strive is unsupported, even though they literally advertised it as being playable. So something's going on. Next is your friends and chat function. Yeah, I know a lot of people have Steam friends, but I know a lot of people don't use the chat function. And honestly, it's not that bad. Yeah, as you can see here, I'm just typing to a friend of mine on Steam. Look at that. Flawless execution. Now we wait for a response. Wow, look at that, an instant response. Who would have thunk it, right? 
So there are multiple ways to type. You can type with your controller, or you can type with a keyboard if you have one enabled, or you can just use a touchscreen on your Steam Deck, of course. I'm just using a keyboard because I really don't care. Yes, you can also send emojis too. What would a chat function be without emojis? But not just generic emojis as well. You can also unlock game-specific emojis from your games if you, you know, buy them from the points shop or partake in the Steam trading card system. Imagine if Discord had this. That'd be kind of cool. Another thing too is that if you send a URL that's a picture, it actually embeds it in Steam chat. I actually didn't know this. Apparently this happened a few years ago, but hey, it freaking works. So your Steam media is basically screenshots you've taken. I think it's fairly obvious, but you can take screenshots via Steam. Heck, you can even upload them to your Steam profile if you really wanted to. You can make some public, some private, some friends only, and some just unlisted, period. All it costs is your love. So let's move on now. The next option is of course downloads. You can essentially queue up downloads from games. And also, you know, auto updates happen too. They're typically scheduled, but you can actually just manually install them now. In fact, you know what? Let's start a few downloads. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to do was actually go into a game and show you what this in-game menu looks like. You can install the game, so you can check out community tabs, your stuff, and game information, as well as Steam Deck compatibility. What's most important is that cogwheel menu. You can actually access a lot of these menus and properties. You can set launch parameters, you can change auto-update frequency, you can change languages or enroll in betas if any exist. It's almost exactly like desktop Steam. And look at that, my friend does want to get a Steam Deck as well. So now we move on to the most important menu, the settings menu. You can change your preferred language, switch to a 24 hour clock instead, change your time zone, and you have access to a bunch of Steam OS specific options such as Steam Play. The Systems tab allows you to check for system updates, enable developer mode, format your SD card, and it gives you a host of information about your system, ranging from your hardware to your Steam version to your OS version, etc. And you can factory reset here. Internet is your Wi-Fi settings, and Notifications here is your Notifications tab. It makes a noise when notifications happen. Display is home to a host of display options such as your brightness, adaptive brightness, night mode, and, you know, power settings such as when to dim your display or just straight up turn it off. You also have the ability to color calibrate your very own Steam Deck. Audio controls your external headsets. Bluetooth allows you to pair Bluetooth devices. Controller allows you to change settings for your controller. Keyboard allows you to change things about your on-screen keyboard. Your friends list gives you a couple of options to modify how you chat and also how your friends look. Download option lets you change where you want to download things from as well as allowing you to change whether or not you want to download games while you're playing games as well. You can also set update times as well. Family is for Steam library sharing with your family. Remote play controls your remote play options. You can actually stream games to or from your Steam Deck, so you have options for both client and hosts. Storage is where you manage your Steam library drives, as well as folders. From here, this menu also gives you the ability to uninstall games or move games to another drive. So the home option lets you modify your home screen and what's personalized to you or not. And the library section is where you would register Steam product keys. I'm not sure if you noticed or not, but actually at the top right corner, you can see your notifications and it gives you a little progress bar of what's downloading here too. I've been downloading Dying Light the entire time I was going through the settings menu. I think it's neat that you can click that button at the top right corner, the game icon, and it'll tell you how the game is downloading. It'll even take you to the whole download screen to see if there's anything else that you need to download as well. I gotta say, there was a lot to go over in the Steam UI Overlook. And honestly, this is before I even covered the Steam input system, because honestly, it's not working right now with the method I used to access this UI. And I promise to all of my Steam input faithfuls, I'll be making a dedicated video for Steam input on the Steam Deck. I suspect most of everything that was already there to begin with will remain there, of course. 